Hey guys, okay, we're going to start on chapter 19, Blood Chemistry and Immunology, on page 683. Again, it's your responsibility to read the chapter, the terminology review, and I advise that you read the case studies as well. So let's go ahead and get started on the introduction to blood chemistry and immunology. Clinical Laboratory Improvement Amendments, CLIA, waived blood chemistry and immunologic laboratory tests are often performed in the medical office. Advances in the CLIA waived automated blood analyz analyzers, analyzers sorry, and testing kits designed specifically for use in the medical office have made this possible. Automated blood analyzers perform laboratory tests in a short time with accurate test results. This chapter is divided into two units. The first presents blood chemistry laboratory test, and the second presents immunological tests. The material in this chapter is about blood testing is intended to serve only as a basic guide for the medical assistant and should be supplemented by much well-supervised practice in a classroom laboratory, the medical office, or both. For blood chemistry, please highlight that blood chemistry testing involves the quantitative measurement of chemical substances in the blood. These chemicals are dissolved in the liquid portion, plasma, of the blood. Numerous types of blood chemistry tests are available. The type of test or tests the provider order depends on the clinical diagnosis. Table 19.1 lists common blood chemistry tests with specimen requirements, normal values, and conditions that, call, that can cause abnormal test results. The blood chemistry tests that are most frequently performed are described in a greater detail in this chapter. For the collection of blood, specimen, blood chemistry specimen, please highlight that most blood chemistry tests performed at an outside laboratory require a serum specimen for analysis. You need to also highlight that using a serum separator tube, SST, or a red stoppered tube. An example of a blood chemistry profile frequently ordered on patients in a medical office is a comprehensive metabolic profile, also known as a CMP. That needs to be highlighted as well. Please read over 684, 685, and 686 on the table 19.1. Please become familiar with figure 19.1. And then for automated blood chemistry analyzers, please highlight that automated blood chemistry analyzers are used to perform blood chemistry testing. An analyte is defined as a substance as being identified or measured in a laboratory test. That needs to be highlighted. Please also become familiar with figure 19.2 on page 687. And we're going to go on over to page 688. For quality control, please highlight where it says quality control cons consists of methods and means to ensure that test results are reliable and valid. For calibration, you need to highlight where it says calibration is typically performed using a calibration device often called a standard. The calibration device may come in the form of a calibration strip or cassette. Under controls, the second paragraph, I need you to highlight where it says a low level control, also known as a level one control, produces results that fall below the reference range for the test. A high level control, also known as a level two control, produces results that fall above the reference range for the test. On page 689, I need you to highlight where it says failure of a control to produce expected results may be due to the following. Deterioration of testing components due to expired testing components or improper storage, improper environmental testing conditions, or errors in the technique used to perform the procedure. If the controls do not perform as inspected, patient testing should not be conducted until the problem has been identified and resolved. You will need to become familiar with figure 19.3, 19.4, 5, 6, and 7. We're going to go on over to page 690. For blood glucose, you need to highlight glucose is the end product of carbohydrate metabolism. It is the chief source of energy for the body. Energy needed to perform normal functions and to maintain temperature. The body maintains a constant blood glucose level to ensure a continuous source of energy for the body. 
Halide ingested glucose that is not needed for energy can be stored for later use in the form of glycogen in muscle and liver tissue. When no more tissue storage is possible, excess glycogen is converted to triglycerides, a form of fat, and is stored as adipose tissue. Highlight that insulin is a hormone secreted by the beta cells of the pancreas that is required for normal use of glucose in the body. For blood glucose testing, measuring the amount of glucose in a blood specimen is one of the most commonly per performed blood chemistry tests. It is used to detect abnormalities in the carbohydrate metabolism such as those occur in pre-diabetes, diabetes, gestational diabetes, hypoglycemia, and liver and ad adrenocortical dysfunction. Highlight that blood glucose is measured by several different testing methods, which include the fasting blood glucose, the two-hour postprandial glucose bl blood sugar test, and the oral glucose tolerance test. For fasting blood glucose tests, you need to highlight that the type of test termed as fasting blood glucose, FBG, involves collecting a fasting blood sample and measuring the amount of glucose in it. The patient should not have anything to eat or drink except water for 12 hours preceding the test. Certain medications such as oral contraceptives, salicates, diuretics, and steroids may affect the test results. The provider may place the patient on medication restrictions for a specific period before the test, usually three days. The patient should be scheduled for the test in the morning to minimize the inconvenience of abstaining from food and fluid. An FBG is often performed on patients diagnosed with diabetes to evaluate their progress and regulate treatment, and on other patients as a routine screening test to detect prediabetes and diabetes. Highlight that prediabetes is the term used to describe the condition in which glucose levels are higher than normal, but not high enough to be classified as diabetes. An individual with prediabetes has a risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Highlight that the American Diabetes Association, ADA, recommends the following guidelines for interpretation of FBG test results. For test results, you need to highlight where for the inter interpretation on both normal prediabetes and diabetes and the test results. For the two-hour postprandial blood glucose test, Highlight that the two-hour postprandial blood glucose two-hour PPBG test is used to screen for diabetes and to monitor the effects of insulin dosage in patients with diabetes. Please also highlight that for breakfast, the patient must consume a prescribed meal that contains 100 grams of carbohydrate, which consists of orange juice, cereal with sugar, toast, and milk. An alternative to this consumption of a 100-gram test load glucose solution a blood specimen is collected from the patient exactly two hours after consumption of the meal or glucose solution. For an oral, oral glucose tolerance test, an OGTT, please highlight that it provides more detailed information about the ability of the body to metabolize glucose by assessing the insulin response to a glucose load. The OGTT is used to assist in the diagnosis of prediabetes diabetes, gestational diabetes, hypoglycemia, and liver and adrenal cortical dysfunction. For testing requirements on page 691, you need to highlight that's consisting of 150 grams of carbohydrate per day for three days before the oral, glu oral glucose tolerance test. Highlight that on the morning of the test, a blood specimen is drawn from the patient for an NFBG. Also highlight in the next paragraph where it says after the FBG has been performed, the patient is instructed to drink a solution containing 75 grams of glucose within a five minute time frame. In the next paragraph, I need you to highlight where it says because flu food and fluid affect blood glucose levels, the patient must not eat or drink anything except water during the test. Smoking is not permitted during the test because tobacco is a stimulant that increases blood glucose level. The patient should remain at the testing site so that he or she is present when needed for the collection of the blood specimen and to minimize activity. That needs to be highlighted. Please read case study number one. Now for side effects on page 691. 
Please highlight that during the test, the patient may experience some normal side effect, effects, including weakness, a feeling of faintness, and perspiration. Also highlight that serious symptoms of severe hypoglycemia should be reported immediately to the provider. Highlight that these may include headache, pale, cold, and clammy skin, irrational speech or behavior, profuse perspiration, and fainting. For hypoglycemia, please highlight that hypoglycemia is a condition in which the glucose in the blood is abnormally low, an FBG below 70. Test for management of diabetes, you need to highlight that it is important for individuals with diabetes to manage their condition effectively. On page 692, for self-monitoring of blood glucose, I need you to highlight that the only way for them to know for certain is by self-monitoring of blood glucose, SMBG. SMBG not only provides diabetic patients with feedback for ma maintaining normal blood glucose levels, but it also assists them in anticipating and treating day-to-day -day or even hour-to-hour. -hour. Fluctuations in glucose levels brought on by food, exercise, stress, and infection. All of that needs to be highlighted. Diabetic patients who take insulin, insulin-dependent, must monitor their blood glucose levels each day. Please highlight that based on the results of the SMBG, decisions can be made regarding insulin and dietary adjustments that may be necessary to maintain normal glucose levels. Please read over patient teaching on diabetes on page 692, 693, and partially on 694. Please read case study number two. Now we're gonna to go to frequency of testing. Please highlight that ideally the blood glucose level for an insulin independent diabetic patient should be measured four times a day. In the morning, after an eight hour fast, before lunch, before dinner, and at bedtime. Please highlight on table 19.2 the time of day and the recommended blood glucose level. On under an advantages, please highlight in the first paragraph where it says high blood glucose levels greater than 180 milligrams for a long time can cause progressive damage to the body organism, resulting in blindness, kidney disease, nerve damage, and circulation problems. On page 695 for a hemoglobin A1C test, a hemoglobin A1C test provides the valuable information for determining whether a diabetic patient's blood glucose level is under control. Highlight that an A1C test supplies the provider with an assessment of the average amount of glucose in the blood over a three month period. Under interpretation of results, please highlight that the normal A1C level for an individual without diabetes is four to 6%. Patients with diabetes usually have a higher A1C level than this. Highlight that the American Diabetes Association, the ADA, strongly recommends that patients with diabetes maintain an A1C level of less than 7%. Please become familiar with Table 19.3. On page 696 on the reagent test strips in the second paragraph, I need you to highlight that the chemical reagents on the strips are sensitive to heat, light, and moisture, and must be stored in a cool, dry area at room temperature, with cap tightly closed. Also highlight where it says the container of strips include a desiccant. Its purpose is to promote dryness, as, dryness by absorbing moisture. Please become familiar with figure 19.8, and under figure 19.9, Please, uh, above the patient teaching, I need you to highlight that a control test should be performed under the following circumstances. Number one, when the meter is new. Number two, daily, before the meter is used for the first time. Number three, when a new container of test strips is opened. Number four, if the cap is left off the vial of the test strips for any length of time. Number five, if the meter is dropped. And number six, if the test results does not agree with the way the patient feels. Please become familiar with the patient teaching on obtaining a capillary blood specimen. On page 697 and 698, I also want you to read over the procedure 19.1. And on page 701, under cholesterol. 
please highlight that cholesterol is a white, waxy, fat-like substance, lipid, that is essential for normal functioning of the body. It is an important component of all cell membranes in the body and is used in the production of essential hormones and bile. Most of the cholesterol circulating in the blood is manufactured by the liver. Also highlight that dietary cholesterol is found only in animal products such as in organ meats, egg yolk, and dairy products. High blood cholesterol means an excessive amount of cholesterol is present in the blood. An individual's cholesterol level is determined by his or her genetic makeup and by the amounts of saturated fat, trans fat, and dietary cholesterol consumed. Highlight that high blood cholesterol may cause fatty deposits or plaque to build up on the walls of the arteries in a condition code also known as arteriosclerosis. As the arteriosclerosis progresses, the arteries become more occluded, which eventually could lead to a heart attack or stroke. Highlight that because of this, high blood cholesterol is considered a risk factor for coronary artery disease. For the HDL and LDL cholesterol, highlight that cholesterol is transported in the blood as a complex monocle known as a lipi, lipoprotein. Two types of lipoproteins contain cholesterol, low-density lipoprotein, LDL, and high-density lipoprotein, HDL. Highlight that LDL picks up cholesterol from ingested fats and the liver and delivers it to blood vessels and muscles, where it is deposited in the cells. LDL cholesterol is often referred to as bad cholesterol. Please highlight that HDL removes excess cholesterol from the cells and carries it to the liver to be excreted. Highlight that the beneficial to the body and is often called good cholesterol. Highlight that a low level of HDL cholesterol, less than 40 mg, is a risk factor for coronary artery disease. On page 702, Please read over the highlight on heart disease with a focus on coronary artery, artery disease. On cholesterol testing, I need you to highlight that all adults older than 20 years of age should have a cholesterol test at least once every five years. For the inter interpretation of results, please highlight that total cholesterol levels less than 200 milligrams are desirable. Levels between 200 and 239 are borderline high and levels of 240 or and greater are high. Highlight that according to the American Heart Association, an HDL cholesterol less than 40 milligrams for men and less than 50 milligrams for women are considered a risk factor for coronary artery disease. Highlight that an HDL cholesterol level between 40 and 50 milligrams for men and between 50 to 60 milligrams for women is desirable whereas an HDL cholesterol level greater than 60 mg is considered optimal and provides some protection against heart disease. For patient preparation, please highlight that because total cholesterol and HDL cholesterol determination are not affected significantly by food consumption, the patient usually is not required to fast before collection of the specimen or the blood specimen. In the next paragraph, I need you to highlight that because triglyceride levels are affected, by the consumption of food, the patient must be instructed to fast for at least 12 hours before the blood specimen is collected. Please become familiar with figure 19.10 and case study number 3. Also highlight on lowering cholesterol on page 703 and 704. For triglycerides, please highlight that triglycerides are the chemical form in which most fat exists in food. On page 705, I need you to highlight under the interpretation and test results above the blood urea nitrogen that conditions that result in elevated blood triglyceride levels include obesity, type 2 diabetes, being physically inactive, excessive alcohol consumption, smoking, hypothyroidism, kidney disease, and liver disease. For the blood urea nitrogen, please highlight that blood urea nitrogen, BUN, is a kidney function test. 
for immunology, please highlight that an antigen is a substance that is capable of simulating the formation of antibodies in an individual. Also highlight that antigen may consist of protein, glycoprotein, complex, polysaccharides, and nucleic acid. Highlight that specific examples of allergens and blood antigens. Highlight an antibody is a substance that is capable of combining with an antigen resulting in an antigen-antibody reaction. For immunologic test, specific examples of immunologic test are described next. Please highlight and become familiar with hepatitis test, HIV test, syphilis test, mononucleosis test, rheumatoid factor, antistryptocin test, O test, C reactive protein, cold agglutins, ABO and RH blood typing, and RH antibody titer. For the rapid mono, mononucleosis testing, infectious mononucleosis is an active infectious disease caused by an Epstein-Barr virus, an EBV. Also highlight that it is transmitted through saliva by direct oral contact, and because of this, it is often called the kissing disease. Symptoms of the infectious mononucleosis include mental and physical fatigue, fever, sore throat, severe weakness, headache, and swollen lymph nodes. Please become familiar with figure 19.11, 19.12, and 19.13. On page 708 for blood typing, for blood antigens, please highlight that blood type depends on the presence of certain factors or antigens on the surface of the red blood cells. Also highlight that if a blood antigen is present, it appears on the surface of all the red blood cells in the body. Highlight that if the A antigen is present, the blood type is A. If the B antigen is present, the blood type is B. If A and B antigens are present, the blood type is AB. If neither the A nor the B antigen is present, the blood type is O. On blood antibodies, please highlight that blood antibodies are proteins that are naturally present in the plasma of blood. Please highlight each of those four bullet, uh, bullet points, please. And then also highlight under the RH blood group system. In 1940, Lanstiner and Wiener discovered the RH blood group system while working with Russ monkeys. Most people in the United States have the RH antigen present on the red blood cells and have type RH positive blood. The remaining 15% of the Caucasian population and 7% of the African American population do not have the RH antigen present on the red blood cells and have type RH negative. Please become familiar with figure 19.14 and table 19.4. For the blood antigen and antibody reactions, I need you to highlight that agulations of red blood cells can be serious and fatal if it occurs in vivo in the living body. Also highlight that also the clumping of the red blood cells eventually leads to hemolysis or the breakdown of red blood cells. Please become familiar with the highlight on blood donor criteria. And then in figure um, 19.15 and then you can go over the medical terminology review for this chapter and review on the case studies on what you answer to yourself and what to do and what not to do on page 711.